Well, I suppose there's no more hiding from this movie. You guys have been requesting this for quite a long time now, and as part of my 10th year anniversary, let's just get on with this, okay? I'm sure it won't be that bad. <laughs> Wow. Oh my goodness, this is... This was... Uh, this was... The greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. I mean, Highlander, Rocky, they've got nothing on The Room. The Room, directed by Tommy Wiseau, and also starring Tommy Wiseau, Juliet Danielle, and Greg Sidestro. I think that's how you pronounce it. So The Room starts off where Tommy Wiseau's character of Johnny is returning home to his fiance Lisa, and you see them exchange a bit of dialogue between each other, and I've got to say, this dialogue is just so well written, and... You see the interplay between them. Then you come across another character called Denny, who has a weird fetish with him, where he likes to watch Johnny and Lisa perform certain things. And it has to be said here, the performances here, and the way how the lovemaking scene is done, is just absolutely top-notch. I mean, well done, Tommy Wiseau. Hi, James. Wait. Jose? Host of the Screen Kernels podcast? What are you doing here? What's this I hear about you, um, doing a room review? You can't do that, man. You, you promised. You promised you wouldn't do it. Come on, James. Yeah, I know I initially promised that, but trust me, this movie is definitely worth it. Honestly, it's the greatest movie ever made. You, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're talking about, man. You're tearing me apart, Jose! Anyway, sorry for that brief interlude there. Uh, let me continue on with the review. So once they take an eternity of lovemaking, they get up the next morning and soon go back to their regular jobs. However, Lisa's mother decides to come over and yet again we see a brilliant exchange of dialogue between them as we see that, you know, her mother's trying to tell Lisa that, you know, Johnny's supportive and everything. But Lisa's like, oh, I don't love him anymore. You know, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. And next thing you know, she calls over Johnny's best friend, Mark. And let's just say some very interesting things happen after that. So, of course, a whole bizarre kind of like love triangle followed by another scene where two of Johnny and Lisa's friends decide to go into their their apartment, and uh, also decide to uh, say things like, you know, chocolate is the symbol of love. Yet again, another great piece of dialogue there. And it also has to be said as well, this movie, oh my gosh, I've never seen a movie done so perfectly with its interchanging scenes. And then, of course, you get another lovemaking scene between Tommy and Lisa, yet it looks just like the one that came near the start of the movie as well. And then as the movie goes on, there's some more scenes of like where Johnny and Mark are talking and I've got to say the one line and the one scene where Tommy goes up and says, it's not true, I did not hit her, it's bullshit, I did not hit her, I did not. Oh hi Mark, absolutely the pinnacle of acting right there. Hey James, Shirley here, found out you're going to be riffing the room. What? Host of Beyond the Airwaves? Why are you here? Are you nuts? Riff Tracks ripped the hell out of it a couple years ago. Please, for your own sanity, think about what you're doing. Please, please, please. What are you talking about? My sanity's fine, although that has been questionable lately. But trust me, this is absolutely fine. You guys have nothing to worry about. And I know Rift Tracks already did this a couple of years ago, but they completely missed the ball on this movie. Anyway, can I please stop being interrupted and just review this magnificent movie? So yes, as the story goes along, we soon see Denny involved with some kind of drug thing where he owes a gangster money, but thankfully Johnny and Lisa and Lisa's mother come to his rescue and really kind of 
pull his ears back about it, and you kind of get a father-son bond between Johnny and Denny. Now, as the movie goes on, we see Lisa and Mark's relationship start to develop a bit further, and I have to say this, they're probably a better fit than what Johnny and Lisa are initially as well, because Johnny, let's just say he's certainly unique. Although, you do end up feeling sorry for Johnny's character, the fact he has no idea what's going on behind his back. Now, as the but as the movie goes on, you know, we soon see things start to wrap up and... Whoa! It's a damn puppet! James, come on, man. Not the room. You got so much to live for. You got kids to think about. Does James have kids? I don't think he has kids. Come on, man. You, you don't need to do the room. There are better movies. Come on. Think about it. Don't do it. Kevin? From Miserable Hair People? You as well? Uh, no, I... Don't have children, you don't have to worry about anything there, but wait a minute, what are you talking about? This this movie can't be that bad, it's it's cinematically perfect. You know, there's a reason why Tommy Wiseau goes around cinemas every year reviewing this movie, but nah, nah, these people can't be right at all. Anyway, hopefully that's the last of the interruptions. Now, when it gets to Johnny's birthday party, the truth is soon revealed and... After a major argument with his best friend Mark, Johnny decides to just put an end to everything, tells Lisa that he knows everything that's been going on, and then unfortunately decides to depart this world by putting a bullet through his mouth. And sadly, that is where Lisa comes up and asks the age-old question of, is he dead? All the while Mark is telling him to wake up, but something tells me you can't wake up from a bullet to your mouth. And so therefore, the room sadly ends. I wish it could have been longer, but I have to say this. This movie is a complete pile of dog crap, but thankfully it's one of those movies that is so bad it's good. It's absolutely hilarious with its performances, and it takes a certain amount of mindset to work on this bad of a movie, but to make it so bad and yet it's good. So therefore, my final verdict is a 2 out of 10. Guys, thanks very much for watching this very special review. I hope you didn't mind the, uh, the slightly sarcastic views there. And thanks to Oddball Extreme, Kevin from Miserable Hair People, and host of the Screen Colonels podcast, Jose. Thank you guys ever so much for contributing towards this review. And thank you guys out there, if there are any of you out there who have still been watching over the last 10 years since I started reviewing movies on my old channel. As always guys, if you are new to my channel, feel free to click here to see more and subscribe as I do make new videos as often as I can. And don't forget to click that bell as always so that you're always notified of whenever a future video is posted. And as always guys, I shall see you all on the next one. And as always... Take care.